not the props out by the, by the king of the castle for about 30 seconds. It didn't take them long. Most of the hour. But listen closely. If Christ did not have you and I as his royal treasure, not only would there be no wealth in the kingdom, but Jesus would be weak and he'd be feeble and it'd be an easy pushover. What keeps the kingdom strong is its people in the strength of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? <clears throat> what keeps the kingdom of God strong now is the strength of the faith and commitment of his people and the people of Christ, the people of God, the Christians who maintain the sacredness and holiness of God in their personal lives, in their families, in the church. This is what sets us apart, not just because we call ourselves Christian, but because he deposited his love in us, he deposited his spirit as literally the, the assurance of our eternal salvation is that you and I have been sealed yeah. by the Holy Spirit of God. And God has put his okay, his seal of approval on you and I. Hallelujah. That should raise your head, square your shoulders, put your chest out, and be proud to be a child of God. Amen. Rejoice in the God of your salvation. And it is ours, it's incumbent upon us to live in the standard of this spiritual wealth of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what's really beautiful about it is that the wealth that Jesus had before the foundation of the world, before God had with the Lord Jesus Christ, he was willing to share the wealth of the spiritual glory with you and I. If you read in John chapter 17 in his priestly prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, you will find that Jesus is saying, Father, the glory that I had with you before the foundation of this world, I shared it, I gave it to you, these ones that you've given to me. I've made them wealthy. Are you getting this today? We were poor in this world without God and without hope. We were nothing in this world. But we have become, watch now, we have become the envy of the world. And it's not just as God's people, but as America, as a Christian nation, we have been, we are and continue and always will be the envy of this world. And the church needs to come back to be restored to be the envy of the world. Christian people in this world ought to be running to the church in order to become a believer because of the value that you and I have. Because we expose the glory and the wealth of Almighty God. Some people don't believe because of the bad witness and bad taste that some people who call themselves Christian that leave bad taste in the mouths of other people around, the, around, the, around them. And they refuse to accept Christ because it's hypocrisy in many cases. God has made us wealthy people. Wealthy by his grace. The church needs again to, be, to rise to a level and to allow ourselves that intimacy with Christ to give us that value, to give us that sense of sacredness of our personal lives, our marriages, our families, and our homes so that we become and be envy. Remember what Jesus spoke about in Matthew chapter 5. He said, blessed are, and so on and so forth. The word blessed there means happy. Watch now, watch now. The word blessed means happy, yes, but it also means to be envied. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed, so on and so forth. He said blessed, blessed, blessed. It means not only to be happy, but he says to be envied. There's only two kinds of people in this world, Tyler. This is only two, two kinds of people. It, uh, there are people who envy and there are the enviables. For those who are envy. And I think the church needs to rise once again to that Amen. level. Amen. That people will envy what we have. Amen. They would desire what we have. Amen. They would want what we have. Jerusalem in the Old Testament was the place where all nations are supposed to flow into it. Desiring the God of Israel. 
and the church has reduced the sacredness of the name and profaned it. Who needs it? And they brought the idolatrous activities and reduced the sacredness of the sanctuary and the church building to where people themselves are not worth anything in terms of moral or spiritual equity and value because God no longer holds dominion over their hearts. Right. Now is the time for the church to rebound, to the church to come back to its place of sacredness, its place of value in society. To a place of value in society. And that doesn't begin just at one place. It begins with every individual. It also begins, begins at the pulpit as well. Today I am telling you, we need, a, we need a, the holy name of God in our lives, the sacred name, and we also need the sacredness of the place of God, his house, and we need to have sacred space in our hearts and in our lives so that we are not just common people in this world, but we are a people, a treasure to God above all other nations, above all people. Are you getting that today? We are a special people above all other people. Do you feel special like that? And if you do, count it a joy because God has made you special in his sight, not because you were intrinsically valuable because none of us were when he saved us, but because he chose to place his love upon us. He chose to bless us. How many glad that you're blessed by knowing him? How many glad that you know the Lord Jesus Christ? You glad you know that? Give the Lord a good clap off the Lord. Hallelujah. We're a special people chosen by God, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Father in heaven, this morning, here we are in your presence. Here we are giving thanks, Lord, because of your faithfulness and your goodness toward us. We ask you, Lord, that you accept our thanks for saving us. Our thanks, Lord, for writing your name in our hearts cleansing us through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to rise again and bring our God to a place to where he is exalted, honored, revered, feared, and most of all served in worship with great commitment, with passion in our hearts, that we would love him above all earthly possessions, knowing that his wealth cannot be purchased by material prosperity, material matter, but he's willing to give it to us and make us rich. Father, we commend ourselves to you right now, and we say, Lord, we want to bring Jesus' name into our hearts to a place of sacredness. If we are a treasure to him, Lord, we must see you as a treasure to us first. We love you because you first loved us. We want to see Jesus as the greatest possession. If he sees us as the greatest possession, then we must first see him as the greatest possession. I ask you, Lord, today that we would see Jesus high and lifted up because one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But today we want to do it willingly. We want to do it from the heart and committed. We say, Lord, you be Lord in our lives. At this hour, Lord, we commend ourselves to you. As every head is bowed, every eye closed, and those watching by live stream today, this is the moment that you can say, Lord, I, I want to come to grips with this. I want to see you as the greatest possession of my life. I want to see you as the greatest value and the greatest treasure in my heart. And I want to see my life of higher value so that I can maintain certainly the sacredness of Christ in my life. If that's you and you want me to include you in a closing, closing prayer, please raise your hand and I'm going to include you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? God bless you. Each and every one of you. Christ must never be a, a thrown into the mix of commonplace. He must be the greatest value and greatest possession that we have. That nothing matters more to us than him and his name. Father, for these who have raised their hearts before you, we thank you for your faithfulness. And we say, Lord, today that as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's table on this Easter, 
Sunday. He rose again the third day to give us this treasure, to make us treasure, to make us purchase possession of God, a royal treasury. Thank you, Lord. We've been made rich. For your word tells us in Revelation, buy from me gold that's been tried by fire. Come without money. Come by faith and purchase this great value from God. And so we say, Lord, today, help us to make Christ the most valuable thing and treasure of our life. That we would live likewise. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's table, we say, to God be the glory of great things he has done. Bring us into that place, Lord, that we see he, Jesus, high and lifted up. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen.